What's up, everybody? What's up? Hope y'all ready for today. It's going to be a real good night. What's up, Danielle? Can you see me? Mm -hmm, no. Oh, oh. I don't think so. Let's go. Yeah. I'm going to put everybody on mute until we get all the way started here. It's going to be a good night tonight. Go ahead and get on here. I'm going, going live on TikTok too. It's gonna be pretty fun. Great. Hope everybody having a real good day today. It's gonna be lit in here tonight. What's going on, Jay Garcia? You ready? Oh yeah, we got them coming in now. What's going on? We got a Q&A tonight. You got any questions, drop them inside the chat. It's going to be a real good one for sure. We're going to get live exactly at 7. What's up, Danny? Hey, how's it going? Doing good, doing good. You ready? Yep, you. Oh yeah, let's go. That time. Mobile home Q and A. Let's go. Okay, we got it. We got a bunch of folks jumping in so far. Let's go. It's gonna be a real good live right here. Let's go. Where y'all energy at? I'm ready to see it. Hope y'all got your notepads out. Hope you got your pen. Hope you got your questions ready. We're gonna go win mobile home Q and A. I got some vets on here today with me. The dream team, it's gonna be a real good one. We're gonna get this thing started at seven o'clock on the dot. We got more people coming in, let's go. Welcome to all the new people who just joined in, who I just uh, admitted in. We're gonna get started right now. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. So like like I say before anything, make sure you got your notepad out, make sure you got your pen out, and make sure you got some questions jot down that you're gonna be ready to uh ask because we're gonna be we're gonna be doing some rapid fire question and answering towards the end of this here. So be ready for that because you you gonna this is a real good chance to be able to get a lot of information done. So I'm gonna make sure everybody on mute just for right now until it's time for Q&A. So I'm just gonna give a little story about myself. I'm gonna introduce myself. Uh, a lot of people on Facebook know me for Holden Nelson. Um, other people on YouTube might know me for Brad Nelson. I'll give a little uh, understanding about that. Um, honestly, the two different names, Holden is my middle name, Brad is my first name. I got banned on Facebook for selling too many fake, too many mobile homes and they thought I was a fake individual. So I literally had to start a whole new page with my middle name. So some of you are coming in knowing me as Holden, some of you are coming in knowing me as Brad. I wanted to clarify that up for everybody. And then on top of that, I wanna just give a little bit about my story about who I am, okay? So this is who I am. I've been in mobile home investing for about, about three years now. Can everybody see my screen, first of all? Can I get a yes from everybody? Can everybody see this? Yes. Yeah. Great, great. Yes. So I've been in mobile home investing for about three years now, right? And I've been running a marketing agency for over 10 years. I got started off throwing parties. Um, I would throw parties that would have over a thousand people. The most people I ever had at one party without having any significant um artists show up was about three thousand people, and I had that consistently consistently for about a year. Um, that was the first time I ever touched a little bit of money and just really got in, got started and just really understanding like what am I doing here? What is what is actually getting people outside doing? What like what is this thing I'm doing? And the way I did that was through text message marketing. I actually would get everybody's phone numbers before the parties. You couldn't even you couldn't even enter the party unless you gave me your phone number. 
So I would send out a bunch of text message blasts to everybody every week, letting them know where the party was, which was my parties. So that's how I really got started into the whole marketing agency. And I see a lot of people just came in. Hey, what's going on? Everybody who just jumped in. Uh, shout out to you for taking the time to be able to get in here and shout out to everybody else. Um, what I'll do is I'll kind of go back a little bit since we just got started and we got more people jumping in right now. This is a great turnout. I really appreciate you guys because you guys could pay anything, but ain't nothing like paying with your time. And I understand that. So I just wanted to let everybody know a little bit about myself. My name is Brad. Some of you know me as Holden off of Facebook. I've been in mobile home investing for about three years now. I've been, um, I got started with throwing parties. Like I said, the, the reason I had big, huge, successful parties was because I would literally do use text message campaign. And I'll show you a little, this is like 4,000 people uh, at one of my biggest parties. I've been throwing parties since 2012, guys. So I took that understanding of knowing how to throw uh, good events. And I was like, man, what, what can I do to get into the business world? I'm getting a little too old. I'm actually 33 to today. I don't know if I look like it to you guys, but I'm 33 years old. And I was like, man, I'm this is getting crazy right here. Um, I need to change things up. I'm going to be 40 years old inside the club. Who wants to do that? Not me. So I decided to, to take the marketing to another another level. And I started with uh, one of my first major clients was Dan Ryan Builders. And I helped them sell over 200 townhomes. Um, in the Greer, South Carolina area. These are actually all the homes that we sold out. This is the plots of uh, everything we sold out. I also helped them sell every single one of these with my marketing strategies, with text message campaigning and videos. So with that being understood, I was like, what's next? What do, what do I do next? I watched this big major company make over $14 million in front of my face. So when I, when I saw that, I was like, there's got to be some way for me to take this exact strategy that I'm showing them to help them sell out their homes. Uh, and they was, they were the, the top two agents that I was working with under Dan Ryan, they, they moved from the bottom of the list to the very top of the list now, because they were the only agents using this type of marketing. So with that being said, I got into my very first mobile home deal, which was this house right here. <laughs> which brings up so many memories. So I got this house for $32,000 from a park from a park owner. I did not have to literally pay for this home or uh, this home right here. It was a friend uh, who introduced me to him who knew that I had a marketing agency and the mobile home park owner didn't have any type of marketing. He didn't know how to use mo uh, Facebook marketplace. He didn't know nothing about it. He just knew all I know is uh all I need to know is, uh, do you got money and do you want to stay here? That's all he knew. He he, he owns over 100 different parks from here to Florida. And he said his Easley Park is going slow. He don't know why it is. He don't got the right connections. I said, well, I could definitely help. And um, I would like to try to at least try to sell the mobile home. This is my first time trying to sell a mobile home. So he let me get the mobile home. Uh, we sold the mobile home for $32,000 and he handed me $4,000 in cash um in commission with the park owner which was one of the biggest things man I, i'm talking about it changed it changed everything because at that time i was probably only getting about 500 dollars per agent for just doing regular marketing per month so i was cash flowing about thousand dollars a month just for working with two different people in my marketing and for me to see a 4k profit just off of one home sold and i sold this home in exactly one week for him it changed everything for me honestly so I knew right then and there, I was going to take off and I wasn't going to stop. I, I knew if I could do this once a week, I could make a significant amount of money. And that I did. So before I go into my story, I wanted to kind of just, uh, just introduce the team. Okay. So I got a, I got a dream team with me. A lot of them is in here right now. What's going on, Mark? What's going on, Jose? What's going on, Danny? What's going on, Danielle? They all are in here. These are the these are the top tier people that you can meet in in this mobile home space. I promise you. And when you hear them speak, you're gonna understand what's going on with them. So I want to start it with um, the big dog, Jose Garcia. How you feeling over there today, man? Every day is a beautiful day. How you doing? Doing good, man. Um, give a little introduction and um, give a nice little story to everybody before we get uh, jumping all the way into the Q and A. Sure, sure. So 
I'm Jose J. Garcia. I go by the letter J typically or Garcia, either or. I've been investing in mobile homes for right at eight years now. I started with uh, like uh, Nelson with one mobile home. I wanted to be the next real estate flipper. But when you have a corporate job, no funds or means, that's kind of a little impossible. And taking it from an introvert who does not like to ask people or talk to people at that time. I love talking to people now. Things change. Um, you know, it was one of those where you don't have the funds. I thought everything had to be paid out of pocket. Struggled a little bit with that. And, uh, but I did stumble upon a mobile home. Thought the same thing I'm seeing on this reality shows, which they all make it look easy, by the way. It ain't. Uh, you know, I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll implement that into a mobile home and it'll work out that way. Struggle with that, but uh, long story short, I ended up with one mobile home that a park uh, owner actually gave me the chance to come in and uh, purchase it. And I overpaid, of course, but you know, lessons learned from day number one. And it's one of those things that took it on. I uh, very quickly realized that the hardest workers in America, contractors, don't like to work. So I ended up having to rehab this mobile home myself. That one rehab into one mobile home turned into 10 mobile homes that first year, which is what I ended up with. 10 mobile homes, 10 different rehabs, all done by myself. Put them out there and I was officially a landlord. So, you know, even though many times I think when you're getting into this and, you know, it, it, it's nice to hear those stories, those success stories. But, you know, it's never lose that doubt of, you know, because it, it gets challenging. You know, just because it can can be done doesn't mean it isn't hard. When you have a family, when you have other things going on, you know, so many things come in the way, but just keep going. It was one of those things. Uh, that was the first year. Year two, we got more into then uh, wholesaling. We got into creating notes because, again, being a landlord is great. There's cash flow, but there's also a lot of calls, a lot of calls that come in with that. So, you know, and, and I'll share more of this in my story, you know, as we go on. But. You know, since there we've grown, we do everything I like to say with our mobile homes, a wholesale flip them. We do Airbnbs inside of mobile homes, inside of communities. We do Section 8s, veteran assistant housings. We move them, of course. Beautiful thing about mobile homes is that they're mobile. You'll hear more of that from Anthony, who will tell you a lot more on that. Um, and the list goes on. You know, to me, it's always a how can I create uh, a solution, be a problem solver, because that's what entrepreneurs are. And, you know, when it comes to the mobile home uh, investing, it's not all about me, 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 the housing and what I can create, the cash flow. It's also how can I create opportunity? The bigger the opportunity you create, the bigger your payday will be. You know, I, I believe highly in that. So, you know, and we just ventured into more. More opportunities come, more deals come, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, a little story on that. One of the biggest opportunities that I see a lot of people missing out on is uh, mobile homes without titles. And I don't blame you, you know, as much a mobile home is like a car. If it doesn't have a title, probably need to be questioning. You got to have those red flags up and paying attention. But some of the best deals that I've gotten on individual mobile homes are mobile homes without titles. It, it, and it's because it's, you know, somebody abandoned it. Uh, maybe uh, somebody got evicted from, from the community, left the mobile home. Rule of thumb is if somebody's getting evicted, they're not going to take their home. That's typically the way it works. But I found a solution of how to get titles so that I can then title these mobile homes, register into our names, and then carry on the same process that we do with rehabs. The majority of the homes that we have today are all rentals. And then there's rent to owns and, again, other strategies. But, uh, you know, a deal in specific, you know, so I have a blueprint. Everybody's different. Every investment is different. And, you know, that's the way it works. But I like to be a third in, all in. To what the final resale value is, ARV, right after repair value. So in our market here in Georgia, if I can sell a 3-2 single wide Fleetwood, whatever, for 30K, I don't want to exceed 10,000. That's my number. And that's all in. That's the mobile home. That's the rehab. That's the material, the, everything. Okay. So when you talk about, you know, like a deal I had with the mobile home like this, you know, to a park owner, that that's an issue that's sitting there. They don't know how to solve it. And they just kind of carry on. And a lot of times I've seen that with these park owners, nothing against them, no negative, is they get complacent. Oh, it's just the mobile. It's been there for, for a couple of years. You know, one thing I use is a strategy of numbers. You know, this is a numbers game too. So coming into something like that, it's like, you know, you're not just, you're not just losing the revenue on the mobile home, but it's also costing you. So now when we add those numbers and I break it down, here's what you lose in a month's time. Here's what you use in a year's time. If I'm able to come in and take over, you know, these are solutions we can create for you. So most times than not, I get these mobile homes for free. 
you know, I got a 3-2 Horton uh, in Griffin, Georgia for free because, again, it had a title issue. No liens, no nothing. It was just no no title. And what we ended up doing was a bond title, which we coach on here, by the way. For those of you listening, missing titles, okay? No more losing out on a sale or a purchase. And we were all in for $2,600. $2,600 for the paint for the material because the home didn't need much. It just needed a title, but it would have sat there for years. I sold the same home I'm talking about for 30 k like I said. We got a $5,000 down payment, which you see we got all of our money and then some, and then you just got infinite returns. It just keeps coming because there it is. Problem solved. Park owner now gets to collect lot rent. I get to create a beautiful ROI. That is a 351%, by the way, ROI on something like that. So that's where the opportunity is at. And it's not about stealing, taking, or nothing. I created solutions. So this is the kind of stuff that, you know, all of you can learn from here. The end. That's awesome. That's awesome, bro. You just blew my mind right there, man. Um, let's take it over to uh Danielle Ruffin. She actually had joined um joined me and got some mentorship. And um, I want her to kind of give an intro and a little talk and a little story about herself. And now she's a team lead with the with the crew. So tell them how you've been doing and how you was able to get everything rolling for you, Danielle. Um, I'm in Carolina, and I've been doing um a little bit here now. Your internet may be a little slow. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of jumpy a little bit. Try one more time. Homes for two years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Danielle, uh, let let's try to re let's try to jump off the Zoom and jump back in. We'll go to Miss Dan Danny Hicks, and then we'll try to see what's going on with your computer here. Miss Hicks, what's going on? Hey, so a little about bit about me. I've kind of done a little of everything in manufactured homes. I started out wholesaling, knew nothing. Everybody. Hey, can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me fine right now? You're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's kind of going in and out a little bit. We starting to get, we starting to get so many new people in here. Huh? Okay. Now let's give it a try again. I hear you good now. Okay. Um. Yeah. I start, I'm not sure where I started cutting out, but um, I started out wholesaling, then I did flips. Then I ended up networking a ton. And to me, you know, everybody does his business differently. To me, networking is everything. You will get everywhere if you if you build that network up. Um, so I started working with a manufacturer for him. Um, did that for a bit. And That's then not Linda. Danielle to talking. She doesn't know <laughs> my, my people. Hey. She lives in Florida. I do. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, so I jumped into the lending space because so many people don't realize that financing is available. Same with, you know, seller financing. I saw so many people doing it the wrong way. You know, regular financing, people didn't even know existed. And I kind of learned about the importance of financing the hard way with my second flip. Um, I bought in a 50. I'm not sure. Did did did, did she pause to everybody else? Because she paused yeah. to me. Yeah, she's. Yeah, she did. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll press we'll press pause on Danny Hicks, and I'll text her right now. Tell her uh, restart. Mark, you already up in the you up the bat. What are you doing? Hey, how's it going, everybody? First, before even starting, uh, I want to go back on a couple things Dan Danielle said and and Jose so far. Uh, one thing that Danielle said that I really want to uh, everybody to highlight in their notes is that everybody can do this business a different way. There's not one way to do this. There's millions of different ways to do this. No matter where you are, you just have to, and this is connects to what Jose says, is find ways to solve problems and come up with solutions and find out what's in your marketplace, 
what 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 gaps what holes are there and find ways to connect dots and fill those holes so i want to just like piggyback off of what they said because those two things are some of the most important things especially when it comes to longevity um, jose mentioned he started this uh eight years ago six years ago he said um, i myself started back in 2014 um so when i so when we um because the best thing to do is learn how to find solutions and, and, and learn how to do all the different ways how to do this. That's what's going to uh, help keep this going for a long time. Once you master, you know, one skill of wholesaling and then getting to the fix and flipping, you know, kind of being able to have all the different tools in your toolbox to be able to solve all these different problems. And uh, Brad's been awesome enough to really pull together, like he said, a team of Avengers uh, that could cover all the gaps and uh, kind of go over my story where I started. Um, I was traditionally wholesaling regular houses before mobile homes, or at least trying to. I was fresh out of college. I uh, had my master's in architecture and um, bachelor's in construction management. And what I didn't know at the time is wherever you get your degree is the only state you can operate in. And I went to Boise State University to play football, and I never wanted to spend any other part of my life uh, in Boise or Idaho, nothing against it, but it's just not my type of place. Uh, it was just, uh, for sports. So all that, all those years kind of went out the window when it came to degrees. And, uh, I wanted to get into mobile homes. I read one of these books, rich dad, poor dad over there. And, uh, that kind of like bridged the gap between me wanting to be an entrepreneur and then getting into like architecture was mobile homes. Um, they're just real estate in general. So I started trying to host, um, wholesale, I hope sell my first house in Tennessee, Nashville, when I lived there. Then I came, I live in Arizona now. I came back to Arizona, wholesaled one house. So two years, wholesaled three houses, trying to go hard with traditional real estate. I went to a random meetup and there was a lady there saying how she was making 55000 a month, her 18th month in the business and had over 355 mobile homes cash flowing out of Texas. And I'm sitting there scratching my head like, I didn't know there were mobile homes. She said the mobile home thing very last. So I'm trying to scratch my head thinking 55,000 mobile homes, 18 months. That's a lot of houses, you know what I mean? And she dropped mobile homes. And while I was sitting there in the audience, I got on a offer up in this other app called Five Miles, which is uh, really similar and found two mobile homes uh, for $2,500. I went over there on the other side of the city. Um, I had $200 in my pocket. I was like, Hey, this is what I got in my pocket today. I didn't think to bring anything else with me. Here's a down payment. I'll give you the rest on Friday. This was a Tuesday by Friday. I had already got that home under contract for $17,000 with a $5,000 down payment. The lady started making, uh, $250 a month payments. Okay. Month eight, rolls by something goes down with her daughter in Pennsylvania. She's got to leave Arizona to go to Pennsylvania. She's got two options. She can sell the home, pay off what she owes me, or she can give it back to me. No harm, no foul, whatever she's got in her pocket. She can take and go. I took, she took that option. I got that home back. Um, I borrowed a $4,000 life insurance policy loan from one of my friends and used it to rehab the home. And then I resold that home for another $20,000 cash after that with, with delivery the person had to move. So like I factored in like 10,000 of that for the move, but it really only cost about 6,000. And so after that, um, I had trouble finding a mover and I found one mover, uh, some Mexican guy from straight out of Mexico. His dad didn't even speak English. Nobody in his family did. He barely did. And, uh, I told them, Hey, if you can make this $6,000 cheaper, I'll come and do all the work. I'll learn how to do it. I'll even help you with your other homes to get to my house faster. And, uh, we started doing that, started working for him Next thing you know, we partnered and we started going to auctions, tax auctions and eviction auctions. And we started getting five to six mobile homes every week. And some of them for as cheap as $10 each at the tax auctions. And one of the tricks, one of the stories, this is what um, my my gem for the day when it comes to uh, moving mobile homes. And, and one of the one of the gems and like uh, ninja tricks that you can do is well, the first thing that we would always do as soon as we got the home was submit a first right of refusal to the mobile home park, which gives the mobile home park the first right to buy home, to buy the home, they get the first dibs, or they have the right to refuse that and let you take the home. Now, if they want to buy the home and keep it in the park, they have to match the offer of whatever you said like that your buyer is willing to pay. So the first thing that we would do is put in a first right of refusal because what that does is start the, the clock ticking because you have to give a 30-day notice before the home gets moved. We don't want to wait till we find a buyer 
to give a first order refusal and then the 30 days starts right there and now we might have to depending on which day of the the month it is that might start a whole new month of lot rent that comes out of pocket so the first thing that we would do is put in the first right of refusal for what we wanted to sell it for because a lot of the time the parks would buy them back on the spot because they wouldn't want it to go. So we'd go to the auction, get a home for $5, $10 and put in the first right of refusal just so we could start the 30 day, you know, we didn't have to wait a 30 day, um, you know, extra month because we had to give a 30 day notice before it moved and we'd sell in these homes back to the park for twenty five to $30,000 and doing five to six a week. So since then, we started a, a moving company. We have a, six trucks in our fleet. We move not just mobile homes now. We move a lot of government contracts. We specialize in military uh, complexes, uh, power plants, schools, and uh, like fire stations, police stations, a lot of government and commercial contracts for our moving. Uh, we lease office trailers to a bunch of different commercial job sites where they have like the office trailer and the construction site. We have 44 trailers that we lease to construction sites. They put, They pay in full for the whole year up front and pay for the installation. So about seventy to $80,000 a year um, that they'll pay to lease it plus the install. And we bought 44 of those. And then the houses, the only thing that we do now is land development. If we ever touch a mobile home in a park, it's because it's coming out of the park and we're putting it on a piece of land and we're selling it for three hundred dollars to $400,000 if we put a garage and a fence around it. Boy, you drop bombs. You just drop some bombs. Yeah. Wow. First right refusal. All right. Danielle Ruffin, let's see if you let's see if you uh the, the internet wanna love you today. Okay. I'm on my cell phone now. Um so can you hear me? Yep, okay, I'm not ready to go. Out. Okay, excellent. Well, I folks, I've been doing uh mobile home for a little bit over two years. I was working um, for a company for 14 years and I lost my job, um, which was a nice hidden blessing because uh, I was one of those folks that was raised to work a nine to five. But I had started doing mobile homes, wholesaling um, about six, seven months prior to getting laid off. So I was in position, I was ready to rock and roll. So I wholesaled um, almost a year um, before I pivoted to doing rehabs. Um, Dan, you said networking is everything. When I first started, I'd go out to the dealers. I'd go to the bring them donuts. Um, I'd go to the mobile home parks. Um, and I believe when you're trying to develop a relationship, you need to court them. You know, it's like dating, getting to know a boyfriend or a girlfriend. They have, they need to have that comfort level with you, especially when you're dealing with park owners and managers. They get a lot of folks that approach them, but you want to be top of mind with them. And you want to be that special person they call when they have something in the park or they need need something. Um, so just over that period of time, I developed relationships. Um, and some of the park owners, I'm like, I didn't think they liked me. And one day I got a call. Hey, um, we have an, uh, an eviction, a DMV sale. Would you like to buy this home? And I'm thinking, mm, am I ready to even do my first? You know, I, I believe in being progressive and taking one step at a time. So I was ready because it was almost a year and I got a hoarder house. That was my first rehab. And it took two 30 cubic feet dumpsters to clean it out. Um, we also found um, a dead animal under the couch. And when I walked into that home, I mean, it was, it was high. Um, so, but I had a great team I interviewed. Um, contractors and handymen. Um, I interviewed cleanup crew. So I had a pretty good team. Um, because of the area it was in, I knew what my budget would be. Um, so I went in, we got it cleaned out. We put in new uh, fixed subfloors, new LVP flooring. I had met a great electrician at the mobile home store. So I developed relationships with the folks at the mobile home store. Um, 
and we went in, did all the um, the outlets, and the roof was great, cleaned up the yard. Um, and that's Unmute yourself. Unmute, unmute, unmute. You can hear me? Okay. Yes, I did have to fire my first contractor, and sometimes that happens. Um, I know Jay says, hire fire, hire fire. Just keep it pushing, you know, find somebody else that can do the work. Um, so that is that is what I did um, going into completing my first year. I'm now into my sixth rehab and learning different techniques with the rehabs, least to own. Um, I do believe in this space, you need to have different streams. I have my dealer's license, dealer and manufacturer dealers and sales license. And that has actually opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, I'm doing sales for a, park, a company that has parks in Georgia and South Carolina. And I'm also doing infill um, with a dealer. Um, and I was able to get in with the dealer because I had my license. So I'm a certified vendor for that dealer and I'm doing infill for a park, brand new homes and getting paid on each home that we bring into this park. And they have 36 uh, pads. And so for newbies, pads are vacant, empty lots. Um, that there are no homes um, uh, in on, on those those particular lots. Um, just a background story: that particular park is in a city where, and you're going to eventually learn this. This particular town won't allow homes that are older than ten years old. So no one is sitting on a 2016, 2014, at least not 36 of them. So how do you fight city hall? you bring in new homes, you get qualified tenants that will be able to pay that lot rent. And you put a great big smile on that owner's face and come to find out because I had that relationship with him, learned that he has some other parts. So relationship networking is everything. And also like Mark said, you know, trying to find solutions. I'm in the Raleigh, Durham area and housing has become so expensive, but mobile homes are affordable and they don't have to be like a trailer. They can be, look like my, my recent one over the summer. It was a beautiful home. It turned, it looked like an apartment, gorgeous. So you can make it. It just depends on your market. And we will talk about in our group, knowing your market. Some markets are rentals, some markets are consumer owned. So you will learn, learn that as you go. So I talked about different streams, wholesaling, fix and flip, sales, and fill. So as you go through this journey, folks, you'll find your niche. It's like an octopus, but don't be too hard on yourself. Learn from everybody, get all the information, and you'll find out and you'll determine what best works for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. It was really, it was wonderful. Miss Hicks, where you at? I was like, it did not have time. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna skip the, the intro part and go right into um, kind of how I, my first venture into sort of financing. And it was my second flip. Snagged this home for about $11,000, motivated seller, just found it on, I think it was Marketplace, um, and get the home. It's in a 55 plus community, price selling it for $50,000. Um, nobody, nobody's got $50,000 lying around here. You know, the, the, in my area, the people who got that money, they're, they're going to be in a single family home. So I had it on the market about a month. And we're starting to sweat it, man, because I'm playing, paying a lot rent. You know, I'm, I'm new to this. I'm, I'm really worried. Um, and then I had some guy come up to us. And, and this buyer, he walks in the home and he starts criticizing everything. You know, oh, who did this for? Man, I don't know what's going on with Miss Hicks, though, but she got some gems to drop. I'm trying to tell you. 
Um, Miss Hicks, can you hear me? Maybe she's got to turn off her cellular data and only use her modem at her house, like her house internet. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking too. I'm thinking it's gonna to have to be something like that going on. Um, well, before we get right into the Q and A, because this, because I could tell that there's gonna be a lot of questions coming up here. Um, I was just gonna finish up. Um, kind of how. Um, and we'll get back to Miss Hicks if she able to get back in here, just to show people uh, a little bit about how I have been able to uh, work with Danielle. Um on one of these houses that I that I just recently did. This was like not my last deal, but my second to last deal that happened like last month. So uh because I do, I probably do about two deals a month. Um I wanted to show you guys show you guys exactly what this is. Miss Sherry home. Yeah here we go. So before Miss Sherry home she had she was gonna purchase a house with six for sixty thousand she got pre approved with Danielle uh for sixty thousand and um and 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 the, the house that she was gonna get, she got denied to be able to stay in the park due to some other issues uh, on criminal. And she actually had all the paperwork to suffice for her not be actually being a part of that criminal activity. So once I understood that, I understood what type of person she was. She wasn't the type of person that would get in trouble and get in trouble and not do nothing about it and to try to clear her name. So she she had that, but the park owner just. The, the park, this particular park owner just didn't want that inside their park. So I worked with another park owner and I was able to find another home that she was comfortable with, but it had a couple things to get done to it. Um, some stuff was rotted. We had to change a lot of different things out. Um, as you can see, we changed a bunch of things out inside of this house. And uh, I worked with my contractors, of course, to make this thing happen way better. Um, and then just to show you how everything came out when, when it got done, we added new lights. We added all new type of things. She had a little disability where she kind of, where she needed help with walking into the house. Uh, we helped out. We added a bunch of different stuff, new siding, new windows. We did a lot of good stuff in here and the house ended up coming out real beautiful. We even, uh, you know, due to the weight difference and, you know, in the tenant, we wanted to just make it a little extra, you know, extra strength on it. And we just added everything we needed to make it make it a good deal. Just to get to the numbers, uh, she was approved for. Can everybody see this? She was approved for sixty k with Danielle. She put six thousand dollars down, so that was six thousand dollars down in my pocket. Mind you, I got this house for fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, so I got this house for fifteen thousand dollars. We was funded fifty four thousand dollars from Keyhole, which you see right here. Boom, hit my bank account. Bam, fifty four thousand. Right. I put about twenty thousand into the rehab. She was remember, like I said, she was denied from another denied from another park. And then I found her another park with the pre approval. So I profited. I profited forty thousand dollars on that. She was a super happy client because she saw that I went to war for her, no matter what had happened. And then she had she's already referred me to a family member who I'm actually pre approving right now to do the, to run the same play right back again. So I just wanted to just show you guys a little showcase on. How and this is exactly how it looked when Keyhole uh, funds your deal. They'll send it from them from out of New York. They'll they'll wire it right to your account once someone's pre-approved. So I just wanted to get into that. And um, so before we get going down on on anything else, I, I wanted to see if Danny was back in here. But for right now, let's go ahead and start opening up the Q and A. Okay. So if you got any questions, go ahead and either raise your hand on the um on the Zoom call. Or you can just um oh there we go you you can raise your hand on the Q and A or you can just start dropping them in inside the chat and we'll 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 do a rapid fire here for a little bit let's go who's been who's been listening and who's got some questions all right Larry get on here what's up guys um I'll cut my camera on so you can see me there, there you me. go what's up Larry what's up guys so. Garcia, the titling piece. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that as far as obtaining those titles? I have several opportunities in that right now. That you do. A lot of people do. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> is the on? one question that I get. In. I was thinking I'm going to do a seminar on just how to retrieve or, or, or get access to titles. Yeah. So th there's a few ways to do it. You know, every city, every county, every state is different. 
but you know more so in the southeast where we're currently more focused on uh it's basically you're getting a bond title it, it starts with a van verification and look it's going to take me a while to go through this here so i'm just kind of vaguely drop it on here and we can definitely do a coaching with you but it, it treated like a car you are going to verify that vehicle the VIN number that it's that you're saying that it is um and compared to the mobile home you are going to be required to have an officer out there with you to verify it so that you can submit this form and i don't know what it's called where you're at here in georgia it's called t22b form but bottom line it's a VIN verification for a vehicle that's what a mobile home is you're going to need that. You're going to need a bill of sale or sales agreement that whoever sold you the home or gave you access to the home. And remember, all you need to do is put a dollar to, to make it legible and something like that. And then once the officer verifies the reviews and say, yeah, this is what it is, you say, then they're going to fill that form out for you. You submit it to a bond agency. We can help you with that. Find one of those. And it's not expensive, guys. Look, if I do everything immediately, back to back, and doing this process, I'm telling you, I can do from start to finish. And when I say finish, I mean title in my hand. I can have that done within two to three weeks. That saves deals versus trying to do a ban and it takes you months and that sort of thing. But once you submit to a bond agency, they will create you a bond, which then they mail to you, FedEx, whatever. And then you take those documents over to the tag department or DMV, whoever services uh, titles for, for mobile homes and cars in your city, which then they will issue a title. Yeah. I mean, it is that. So, but again, there's a lot of little steps in there that we can we, we can help you with. Right. Hey, yeah. my mobile home doesn't have a VIN. How do I go about that? We got solutions for all that as well. But it can be done. All okay. right, man, that was good, Jose. That was good. Yeah, Larry, stick around. We got more to come. Lillian, I hope I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is it Lillian? Yes, it is. What's going on, girl? Yeah, a lot. My mobile home park, I purchased a home for $6,500 with a partner, rehabbed it, put it for sale, $65,000. And everybody's like, oh, your rent is so high, $795. Well, I had an applicant willing to pay $65,000 cash the next day. The owner ran, the manager ran her stuff and say she had an eviction on file. And they argued about that back and forth. And the lady's like, she just couldn't deal with the park manager. And they went up on their rent to $950. So I feel like I'm sitting here holding a mobile. I feel like I'm holding a mobile home that I can't sell. I got something for you. Are there any other Cook parks Mark, there Cook that have, uh, Cook empty up. lots? Because a lot of times yeah. when I have uh, situations like that, I'll get another mobile home park to pay to move it into their park and install it. If not, give me like three to six months of free rent. I asked, I actually started doing that today and they because it's a 1986, they want newer mo mobile homes in their area. Got it. Try um a little further out from the city. Like uh like I know um I don't know where 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 where, where are you located? Like which state? It's Mansfield, Texas, around Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas. Try a little bit further out towards like the horse ranch areas, like Allen and a little bit further out. Okay, thank you. And if, if you can move it, you could also focus on people who have individual pieces of land and just sell it to them, which they pay a lot more money anyway. Or you can partner with them and treat them like a mobile home park. I don't need to have a mobile home park. I just need a piece of land. So when I approach a lot of people who are zoned for mobile homes, it's like, hey, let me put two, three mobile homes here, and then I'll just pay you a lot rent like I would down the street, and it works the same way. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you so very much. You're muted. Uh, Anybody else got some questions on here? Ready to jump on? Ready to roll? This the best time to ask. You know, and that's one thing I want to add real quick to is I was actually going to do a uh, a quick little coaching on something like this is a, a lot of times we see where park owners interfere a lot. And I mean, a lot that they are blocking you is what they're doing. It's like they're willing to do so much, but then it's like they're almost against you. And what happens with that a lot of times, too, and maybe even a new park owner. You know, if I'm doing X amount of business in a park and a new park owner takes over, they don't have to abide by what I had in place because to them, it's like, hey, this is my park and we got new rules, regulations. You know, at that point, it's like I will move the home. And to them, you know, like Mark said, it does not benefit them for you to say, or I'm going to take my 10 homes out of here. Then, And a lot of them don't think you can. But, you know, two solutions for something like that 
that I have tossed out there and it's worked both ways is like, okay, I'll either take my homes and like Mark said, get another park owner who will gladly pay for the transportation if you can secure him or her X amount of months, years of, of, of lot rent, or I will turn around and tell the new park owner, how about this? I will sell you the mobile homes. I'm going to give you first dips. Here's what I want for these mobile homes, or I'm going to pull them out and see you lose value, revenue on the mobile home park. So don't get pressured, get put behind, you know, against the wall by these park owners just because you feel, you know, there's a fear there. No, that's hey, amazing. Hey. We'll call and stop mobile transport. We 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 move any home <laughs> the park tries to block. I've had dumpsters parked in front of houses. I've had maintenance man's vehicles parked in front of dumpsters where I filed abandoned title on and took over their cars. We can get it done. <laughs> Well, guys, I do want to just let everybody know. Um, first of all, appreciate everybody for coming here um to this Q and A. This was this was this was amazing right here. Um, I am gonna drop a link to our coaching program. Um, it's only fifty dollars a month for uh for the first twenty members, and you get to get complete access to every single one of us coaches. I'll just drop that inside the chat. Um, so if you if you want to join, I definitely recommend joining. We we do we go in full depth A to Z, step A to Z. We hold your hand. We even uh, help you TC your deals um, for when it comes to mobile home lending. All you do is send us the uh, the tenant over that's interested in buying your property, and we take care of everything all the way to the funding, like you said. So just joining the group is a great opportunity to be around other six figure earners inside the mobile home investing space. And I wanted to at least give you guys this specific deal that I was doing for the first 20 members. We got about 16 people in here right now. Um, honestly, we all charge about three to $5,000 each just for one-on-one -on -one coaching, coaching. And that's the reason why I brought all of these people together to make it more affordable for people to be able to move around this world like us in this blue ocean investment. So with that being said, Try not to waste no time. Jump in there before our first 20 members. We, this is actually our first time launching this live. We haven't been posting that this is an official thing. This makes it official today. You guys are the first people to get into this group. Everybody else inside the group that you see inside the link is admins, and they're, here, they're, they're there to help. So you'll be able to ask questions and learn from the community. It's on a platform called School. So it won't be on Facebook where you'll get distracted from this and that and everybody hitting you up. This is the actual platform for you to learn and earn. So with that being said, guys, I want to just, like I said, thank you for your time. Could not be more better than that. I felt like this was a great, successful Q&A. Um, all I ask for you to do is just check out that link. If you're really serious, you want to get, get help with your first deal, your second deal, you got deals you're thinking about. You want to get into the second tier of mobile home investing. You want help with mobile home lending. We got all the coaches in all the specific categories. We even have specified mobile home insurance because a lot of you are probably doing deals and ain't even putting insurance on your mobile homes. Moving mobile homes ain't even putting insurance on it. Your home going to be out there on the highway and you're going to be liable for that and you ain't going to never want to invest again. So we got special rates for that. We got special rates for the first 20 members that join which is $50 a month. If you got any questions about that, I'm going to open the floor about it. If you got any questions about the community that we got, if not, we'll go ahead and end this Zoom call. And like I said, I just want to tell you, I appreciate your time today. Thank you. You could be doing anything else on at two, on Tuesday at seven o'clock and you chose to be with us. All right. So with that, I, with that, I, any questions about the community? I have a question. I have a question. Kim. Yeah, this is Kim. Hello, everyone. What's up, Kim? Um, What's up? How you doing? Doing good. I like the profile picture now. Let's go. All right. Let me see. Wait a minute. Sorry. I'm pulling up to a site where I've got a bunch. But what I want to know is, Mark, when you move a mobile home, how do you find a mobile home mover? Um, I've had multiple movers who have said they were going to move a unit. And unfortunately, they don't show up and all sorts of issues happen. So... Hey, everybody. Look, I'm in a mobile home park right now. Uh, so we're doing renovations. But anyway, how do you find a, a reliable mover? I'm looking for movers in the state of Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Maryland is an immediate need um, because it's just very challenging. Any ideas or suggestions? 
Yes, Hi, call Jose. the dealerships. The dealerships have a, a list of uh, transporters and installers that they use from the factory, uh, from the factory to like, because the dealers are just the the sales transaction um, offices, you know. So I go to the dealerships because they usually have from five to 10 different transport companies that will transport from the factory to their buyers. And uh, those are those are your best bet. Okay. I will try that. I have talked to the transporters when they've been here um, in one of the parks, and they've actually said they cannot transport for anyone other than the um the factory. Of course. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Um, yeah, I would I would go to the dealers because they they'll they'll have a list of people, and at least from those list of people, they'll have some referrals for you too. Other than that, like the Facebook groups, but I'm sure you tried that already, so I'm I'm not going to mention that again. I've tried that. It seems like those gentlemen are not legit because they always want a lot of money up front. And I know you said do not pay up front. Oh man, I never do a job without like at least eighty percent up front. I don't. People won't pay. I thought you told pay. me you didn't pay up front. I would like I sold I sold a house that I got from auction today, and it was seventeen thousand five hundred for everything with delivery. I made them pay twelve thousand for the title up front. They couldn't even talk to me about wheels, but he being put on the house until they paid for the title, and then that left fifty five hundred, and I and I made them pay four thousand dollar deposit, and then the other fifteen hundred when it got delivered. I usually do all my moves like that. And and if if, if I don't get the fifteen hundred dollars before I leave the park, uh I keep it and I put a lien on it. Okay. How do I determine who's a legit uh mover? Because that's that's my thing. I don't know whether they're legit or not. Referrals. That's the best thing I could say. People who've used other ones and, and have homes installed and, and try to get some referrals either from parks or from other uh dealers. Okay. Put everything in yeah, I love paper. the mo I love the mobile home dealer uh answer because honestly they're they 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 already pre vetted all of these people and they're spending money with these people already and like you said find other investors who actually done this thing in your area and the reason why I'll make it make sense why a lot of the movers don't do any other thing except for for the factory is because when the factory sells the home with their financing the factory pays the mover the installer not the buyer so the so the installer gets paid 100 percent in full up front from the factory ah uh, okay that i did not know okay. and then dealing with you know anything else outside of that is like a headache for them when they get it so sweet with the factories you know okay yeah that makes sense thank you Anybody you hire can anybody you hire can make sure you put it on paper. That's the biggest contracts thing. notarized everything. I do everything and everything goes south you have something to hold up and for. So when uh, I do my contracts, I make them do, and even as a mover, if somebody hires me just to move, it, I'll still use an escrow title agency, title company, and I'll have the, the escrow company open an escrow account. The people pay the escrow company, even if it's just for the move. I didn't sell the house if I just do the move. And I'll have the money go into the escrow account. The escrow company pays me, and the escrow company doesn't release the funds until they do all the stuff they're supposed to do. I don't get paid until I deliver the house, and the escrow company releases the money to me. But that way, the escrow company is like the middleman that processes the whole transaction or a real estate attorney. And that way they're like throwing my third party notarization that way. If like, cause I've had times where I've delivered houses and the people didn't want to pay the last thousand dollars. Stupid. Like they paid $18,000 and didn't want to pay the last thousand. It's like gas money at that point, yeah. but um, it happens. So I, I always use escrow company and title agencies to do that stuff when I, when I'm doing things in, in payments. Wow. That's a great idea. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hey there, this is Danielle. I also wanted to add um, one little thing. I've had um, a mobile home move and in North Carolina, a lot of times I will go on DOT and just check that they have a license, um, make sure they're valid. Um, I almost hired somebody that was not licensed. I did not, but I know somebody did and they end up bending the frame of their mobile home. Um, so it's important, make sure that they are indeed licensed. Remover. Thank you. Thank you. Dropping gems. All right, guys, before we get out I of have here, one other question. This is yeah. Lillian. Um, okay. For the mobile home mover, she also can go with FEMA that sell mobile home. Normally on a the lot, they have a lot of people that transport and they can just give their name out as a referral. But I have a question about the program. Are we getting pre-recorded things? Are we do we send messages through do we send you messages and 
How does it work exactly? Because I'm about to sign up for it. Okay, so with the school platform, you'll be able to ask uh, any question at any time. And then the, the, the purpose of the community is for all of us to learn from the questions. So like just how you just learn, everybody learned some stuff from about the moving uh, situation just now. Mm -hmm. It's all out in the open for us all to learn from each other. We got one-on-one -on -one calls that we do. We got one-on-one -on group calls that we do. And we got different tiers to it. So you just get, you get help from A to Z from all of us. And just like the same way you're doing now. And plus we do a weekly Zoom call just like this uh, with what, whatever your main situation is. And plus, of course, you know, you get access to every single one of us too. Okay. And one other question, the lady does find, that does financing, I know she couldn't get her internet working. Does she yeah, do financing for Texas? <laughs> <laughs> but does she do financing for Texas? Uh, I'm pretty sure. And then if she don't, I know for sure if you if you got the deal in place, they don't have a problem with going ahead and getting licensed in the place that they're not because they want to be able to do all 50. But I believe they're about 30, 30 states right now. For sure. OK, awesome. Awesome. You, you about to sign up. right now. Mm hmm. OK, let's go. Yes, I'm in Texas. Texas. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else got any more questions about the uh, about the group community? Like we said, first 20 members will only be will be uh, stuck at fifty dollars a month. After that, we're going to be going up from there. And um, we do got master classes, uh, like I said, with special people showing you exactly how to rehab these mobile homes for way cheaper. Um, how to get the mobile homes, like we said, the titles, the bonds. We we got master classes for all of that with uh, other special people jumping in here. And we actually teach you how to do marketing and branding. We got act we got access to, like I said, how to get your um how to do your uh, business cards, how to do your door hangers, how to do your you see how we're saying we got it, we got everything going, we got your yard signs. We help you with all of the branding. And plus, we even have an ads master class to teach you how to run ads instead of just being on Facebook and just boosting the posts. So it's a lot of good stuff that's going to be inside of the group. Like I said, man, jump on the link. And um, if you any more questions, just let me know. You can inbox any of us. I have another question. Who's Who are the people that are um, teaching in the group? I joined late, so I'm not sure if you said that earlier. This is Kim again. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all good. I can tell you exactly right now. So we actually got some people that's not in here right now, too. We got um, we got Jose, of course. You got Mark. You got me. You got Danielle. You got Danny. We got Simone. We got uh, JJ. And JJ, she's a, a mobile home installer and a permit specialist. So she she helps on that. And plus, like we said, we got uh, an insurance guy named Chris. He's the our insurance, our mobile home insurance specialist, too. And then we got Danny, who is uh, our finance uh, specialist. She help you uh, with finding all financing for all the different mobile homes, especially me. I'm helping with wholesaling and I'm helping and I'm helping with the financing uh, portion because I have done over 20 deals uh, with Keyhole and uh, using financial lenders. And then we got, of course, the GOAT Jose Garcia in here. And then we got Miss um, Danielle Ruffin who's been doing real well and she has a dealer's license that can help you guys if you ever need that and an actual vendor with Clayton. So, yeah. So we got, about, you got about a good eight to nine coaches inside of here, inside of this thing to be able to help you just like how you getting now. Wonderful. Thank you. Any more questions about the, uh, about the group? <laughs> Yep, jump on in. Leave it. It chimed and said somebody had a question. Well, if not, man, I hope to see every one of you inside the uh inside the school group. Like I said, this is gonna be a, a wonderful group. Uh we just getting started. This is literally just the beginning announcement of it. This is the you you catching it at the very first beginning. And um like I said, thank you for your time tonight, man. And um, coaches, thank you so much for all the gems tonight. Um, I hope we was able to help you all out. And um, we'll see you in the school, okay? All right, thank everyone. Go get you something good to eat. Go take a bite from me because I don't eat after seven. Thanks, Stop everyone. <laughs> all right. All right, everybody. Well, Bye-bye.
Omar, what's going on? I see you got in here late. Any questions? Righty. Yeah, you was at work. It's all good. Yeah, you can DM me, and I, I really, I really highly suggest that you go ahead and join the um, join the school group that I got right here. I just, I just posted it to you. I'll shoot you a DM right now. Go ahead and join that. You could be able to ask a question at any time, and we'll be able to jump on the call. We'll be able to help you out. Anybody else got any questions? It looked like we had some more people trying to jump on here too from the live. You're welcome, Omar. I'll see you in there. Jennifer, I I haven't heard nothing from you today. You got any questions for me? All right. If nobody got no more questions, I'll be the last one to jump off. I appreciate y'all time today.